Yeah, um, I forgot to say actually that um, I've heard it said that um, cooked tomatoes have got anti anti cancer forming properties. Um, so that makes this food even better. I mean, this is it at its stage where I've, I've fried up all the bits, put the tomatoes in, I've just put a sprinkling of those herbs in, like about a spoon of each, and now I'm just going to let it cook through. The rice is still boiling, still going. Now, um, I mean, I mean, I mean, there's that guy. Um, Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, they call him. And his um, famous saying was, as most of you will know, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. Well, I think that's quite clearly what I'm doing here. Is my food, is my medicine, basically. And, and as much as I'm, all, I'm trying to um, cure a few problems that I've got, I'm, I'm also trying to prevent any further problems, any number of countless problems that could come in the future from, from neglect. I'm hoping to prevent a lot of that. You know, I mean, what I was talking the other day about enlightenment being the end of suffering. Yes, that's that's very true. There's a and, um, and and this is where I made I made a reference that happiness really hasn't got anything to do with enlightenment. Really, it, it you should ideally be happy when you have enlightenment, but you haven't necessarily got enlightenment to be happy because there's a lot of people out there happy because at the moment. That everything's going right for them in life and they've got a car and they've got a job and you know they've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend and and they've um, you know they've got the health at the moment and they're out snowboarding and surfing and you know doing all the things that they want to do or just out clubbing with their mates and they're having high times and they're happy and um, but it's temporary happiness it's, it's not going to last because ultimately I don't mean to say this in a nasty way about them It's the, it's the, it was the Buddha's first principle. They will ultimately have to get old, get sick and die. No matter how much of a charmed life they've had. That will happen to them. They cannot avoid a suffering that will come in, in this life. Now, the Buddha, Siddhartha, his name at the time before he was known as the Buddha, before he'd found his great truth and began teaching other people this, this truth, set out to solve the problem of getting old, getting ill and dying. That's what he set out to do, he set out to solve it, not just for himself but for all of the entire world, for, for every single living organism in the entire universe. It was going to solve it, it was going to fix it for all of us. And um, he did in a way because, uh, because he solved it for himself and then he, he taught everybody else how, how it can be achieved. So I suppose he did. He didn't do it the way he wanted to in the beginning, you know, he wanted to be more, um, well, that's another story. I mean, I've personally been, been there myself. You know, been there myself. Followed a similar path. Um. Okay, so what was I saying that got me on on that path? about um, that they that those people can't avoid um, yes that's right that's right so enlightenment um, basically being about the end of suffering let me just open the door in a minute because it's a bit steamy yeah I mean I mean I 
If I didn't have the health problems that I've got now, I'd probably be having a wonderful life. I'd, well, I might be, I might not be, I don't know, it's hard to say, but I probably would be because I would still be a teacher, I would still be teaching. I probably would have been promoted to head of department by now, I probably would be earning something about £70,000 a year, I probably would have invested in a house, probably got a mortgage, probably would have met a nice other teacher, a nice sexy little young thing, and um, probably got married and, you know, got joint income beyond, you know, snowboarding holidays and God knows what else you do when you've got money to waste out and going to travelling around Australia and God knows what on all the holidays that you get. You know, that's why I wanted to do it. <laughs> that's why I chose that. I thought, man, I want a life, man. I want to I wanna do that shit. It didn't work out, I'm afraid. And, um... But my, my life's taking me down a different road, so. But um, but but if all that would have happened to to me, I would have been happy, but not necessarily enlightened, because if enlightenment's the end of suffering, then there's suffering further down the road, and I've kind of gone off gone off on one here. My original point was that I was trying to eliminate and prevent countless number of problems that could come to me in the future <coughs> by the foods that I'm eating now because prevention is a lot easier than cure as you know I'm trying to cure things a few things that, I, that I've got but also I'm also interested in preventing because I'm, all, I'm ultimately seeking that state of enlightenment that state of the end of suffering so I don't want to be living in fear of what if I get this what if I get that you know I want, I want the whole shebang. So that's cooking down now, as you can see, that's reducing. Yeah. So I'm um, just going to stir it a bit. Reducing nicely. Now, uh, I just want to try it actually. Jeez, man. Oh, damn, that's hot. That's all kinds of hot, maybe. Hot gains, hot gains. And then little green chilies. They are hot, they are beautiful, though they've got such a beautiful taste. Even them have got amazing health benefits. That's going to be absolutely adorable with a massive plate of brown rice. Let's turn that rice down. Let me try that rice, see if it's cooked yet. I'm making all kinds of games. All kinds. Imagine. Imagine all us enlightened freedom fighter hippie surfer dudes. It's a bit longer. Living together in a commune and taking it in turns to um, to have food food duty. Because you know the, the truth is 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 it would only be a little bit more difficult to cook this for ten people as it is for one. It's only a slightly larger quantity of preparation. Now freeing up, freeing up time to do other things. Surf safaris. I've always thought like that. You know, and that's um, and that's how people did it in the ancient world. You know, communes. Well, it was more a case of um, a family that was a big family. You know, I mean, times of Abraham and so on. They had, um, you know, fifteen sons and God knows what, and they always had those sons to help go and farm the fields and do the work. You know, the more sons they'd got, the better. You know, I suppose the, the safety in numbers, in some way, of of thinking that. You know, a problem halved is a problem shared. No, I'm going the other way around. Problem shared is a problem halved. And um, it does make it a lot easier sometimes to have other people to help out. You know, one does the washing up, the other one does the drying up. That kind of principle. 
it's uh, it's better than doing it all on your own. I've lived on my own in the past. I did it all and I did 10 hours work as well a day. I was started work at 6. I had a 20 minute drive to get there. I was up at 5. I was actually living in a caravan at the time that had no running water. It had electricity, but that was all that was all that it had. It didn't have any running water. I used to have to boil a kettle in the morning to wash and then to drink my, my tea. Um, then I'd, I'd be out for like half five, driving down free. It was winter, driving down a freezing cold bloody road. And um, then I'd go and sit on a forklift truck for 10 hours in a freezing cold factory. It was actually an abattoir, it was actually a place where they killed animals for meat. And I, I didn't get involved in any of the killing. But I, um, I transported huge pallets of meat, massive, great, great big slabs of meat, all put onto into big containers, pallets, and I'd just transport them from one place to the other. They'd literally come off the, the lorry, a guy would go in with a little handheld truck and put it to there. I'd then pick it up, put it in some racking in a freezing cold storage area, and then down the, down the line, the place where they used to make mincemeat and stuff like that, they used to cut the meat off the bone, and they used to make all the um, like, like like the different steaks, the different cuts, and so on. They would, you know, say, "Well, oh, we need a pallet of that," and I'd take it to them, and that was it. That's what I did all day long. It was vile. It actually made me go vegetarian. I mean, this was about probably about um, ten, you no. Know, about nine or ten years ago now, and I went vegetarian for about um, six months as a result of working there because I didn't like to see, I didn't like what I saw. I've still got some photos actually of how the blood used to drip out the bottom of the pallets. Not very nice. Anyway, and um, and yeah, I went vegetarian, but shortly after that, I came back home, and my mum again. My mum at the time was saying, um, oh, vegetarians, they get um, deficient in blah, 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 and this and that. And she says to me, um, I just eat meat once once a week. And I said, okay, that's a fair that's a fair thing. So I always had a lamb dinner on a Sunday with her, and that was the only meat I ate for probably about six months. Anyway, a few things happened that kind of broke my vegetarianism in the end. And uh, many years later, here I am now, attempting it again, but in an entirely different perspective, um, for entirely different reasons. And uh, and there you go. So yeah, but when I lived on my own in that caravan, no running water, I used to have to go to uh, like a, like an outdoor tap, with great big plastic bottles, fill it up and um, bring it back and everything and I had um, like a camping toilet that's about done now so I, I had like a camping toilet that I used to have to empty out that's not pleasant that's not pleasant even even when it's your own business and I only ever weed in it I never I never did the other in because there was like a block of toilets where I lived and I used to go up there and do all the other but even the wee, after, after a week when you come to empty it, blimey, don't that stuff stink, man. It's like, whew, absolutely rotten, anyway. Yeah, it was it was pretty tough, but do you know what? At the time, because I was on my own, it was tougher if I if I would have had at least just somebody with me, like a, like a girlfriend at the time, because I just split up with my girlfriend at the time, and I was pining for her too, which didn't make it any easier. If I'd have had a girlfriend, it would have been a lot easier. We could have shared some of the jobs, but you know, to live in like a, a commune type environment. I mean, if you all get on, obviously, uh, pretty cool, man. I think. So this is about done. That that's that's reduced right down. So it's like a paste that I'll mix with rice. Rass gains. So look at that rice look. Oh, that rice look good. Oh yeah, look all kinds of good. See, 
see these rocks of all kinds of good. Let's try some of these rocks, huh? No, it's not that good. It's good though. It's um, it's got like a nutty, a nutty texture to it, which I like because obviously I like nuts. It's got a nutty, grainy, exquisite, <laughs> exquisite texture. <laughs> well, I'm just give myself a brain. Um. Bits in watching now. Okay, and that's it basically. I'm gonna go plate that up. I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna get my battery back upstairs. Put this on on the tube. And speak to y'all in a bit. Gains. Okay.